Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> Okay, look at her on camera, honey. Skin coming through. Sunscreen sitting there shining for me. Got me looking good. Um, not sure how we're going to do this, so it's just going to be flat out. We're going to put that out here on the table. Um, if you all do not want to hear the speech, you just want to get straight to the declutter, I'll leave a timestamp right here. You can jump straight to that. It'll be a much closer view. But for those of you who all care to hear what's going on, I wanted to give you all a life update and a channel update. Recently, I know many of you, as well as many of my family and friends and coworkers have noticed that I have not been able to keep up with my recording schedule. Um, I usually upload Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Uh, but recently, I have picked up some more hours at work. I got a new pay raise that just came through. And I've just been doing a lot more things at work. And the extra hours that I pick up there have stopped me from being able to do all the things I wanted to do on my channel. But I would be lying if I said I honestly just purposely fell into that. I wanted to possibly get away because unfortunately, I was going to say, you know what, I don't want to say things that will get me flagged. But you know what, that's what I'm here to tell y'all. We letting the filter go. I've been stressed out, honey. Not stressed out, I've been stressed out. And one, if not the main reason, is COVID then finally hit my inner circle. Unfortunately, my mother was diagnosed and she was tested positive for COVID. Um, my sister-in-law, my aunt, and although I've had, you know, say one coworker here, you know, one friend here, I've never had it where it was this many family members and this close. And things didn't get real, honey. Um, I've seen my mother get hurt before, but it's never been a situation where I sat back and thought about the fact like, this is something that could potentially take her out the game, honey. Like, this is serious. Um, when she got into a car accident when I was a child, she recovered. By the time I found out about the car accident, you know, it was already over, of course, because you are notified through the hospital and things like that. So the actual car accident was over. It was the healing process that was hard for her. And during that time, I never truly thought that, you know, my mother would die from that. It was just when she was having muscle spasms and things like that, I always thought about the fact that her quality of life may not be the same. My mother's a fighter. She came through, ended up being the same old person she was before, but it's never been a point in time where I decided I want to go see my mother and I can't. That's, it's just never happened. So to be in a predicament now where it's like, okay, if she needs supplies or things like that, I can provide them for her, whether it be just picking them up myself and just dropping them off on the porch and allowing her to come and grab them and things like that. It's just never been a point in time where I had to, you know, really keep a distance. Like, it's one thing to social distance and wear your mask. It's another thing to know that when she steps out on the porch, I'm literally across the street and cannot come up and say hello, can't kiss her goodbye and things like that. So I already been stressed about that. And so it's been at least two weeks since I've actually physically touched my mother. And it may, may be at least another two weeks because, you know, they say give you two weeks, but honey, I want we're gonna make sure this thing gone and you done disinfected and cleaned and sanitized everything, because baby, I can't afford no time off. Can't afford to pay my bills and hers if I get sick, honey. But I've realized with that, honey, YouTube has suffered because I've been working a lot more and ain't up on the line, honey. The budget, what budget? The stress of knowing I can go shopping for my mother, but I can't go shopping with her or I can't see her. Um, 
being at work has been what's pleasant for me because it's always something to do. It keeps my mind off of everything. Um, I know my brother is stressing out. He, you know, has to worry about his fiance being sick. He has a very young daughter. So it's like, okay, what if she gets sick? You know, he's the breadwinner. So it's like, what if he gets sick? You know, so it's just hard to know that during times like this, what you want to do is be with your family. But what's best is truly keeping your distance. So it's like, ugh. Uh, my sister seems to be like me where, you know, she's healthy she's happy that she doesn't have it, but it's hard for her as well to try to keep her distance. And it just makes it harder knowing that even though we both don't have it, we can't be as close as we want to be with each other because, you know, this thing isn't going anywhere. So I'm like, honey, you got to take your mind off of it. And for me, it's been two things. Working, because it's always something to do, and shopping. And unfortunately, honey... The budget, she gone. She, I'm going to bring her back, but for the past few weeks, honey, let's just say I'd have been to Ulta, I'd have been to Sephora, I'd have been to the Viseart website, where else? I'd have been somewhere else. And I'd have probably spent the budget in all of them places. So my update, I'm going to show y'all the haul of things because baby, whoo. What I just spent was, oh, baby, that wasn't even legal. I um, I need to smack myself over that. But with that being said, honey, I got some things I want to declutter. The first thing I'm going to be decluttering is the filter on my mouth. Because although I really like my channel, honey, I keep telling myself my subscribers would either actually really love me or really hate me if they got to see... The potty mouth I have in real life, honey. I'm not going to say cussing is every other word that slip out, but I like profanity. And this is not a children's channel. Since my very first video when I've been uploading, YouTube asks, you know, do you want this advertised to kids? I always say no, because I never know what's going to slip up and I always edit it out. But baby, I always get comments about how nice and how much you all love my commentary videos because I'm just so funny. And I'm like, honey... If y'all just knew some of the things that just slipped out in real life, like I said, y'all would either absolutely love me or absolutely hate me. And I think that's part of the reason why my channel hasn't grown the way it should have. Because I think some people can truly see that I'm holding back and they waiting on me because I get way more viewers than I do subscribers. A lot of people watch my content but don't quite click in. And I think they sense that I'm holding back a little bit. And I've been doing that because I want to come off as professional, but it's like Torrance, right now you aren't freelancing. You're just showing people what you do in your free time. And in my free time, I talk messy, honey. I use profanity. Um, Sometimes I like a, a couple sips of wine because I'm sitting in the house. Like, I'm not, I'm not driving. I'm not babysitting. I'm not working on nobody else. So if I want to do my makeup and have some wine, honey, I can do that. And on an adult channel, we ain't worried about that. And I'm like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? What if they demonetize the video? I'm not getting paid for none of these videos. No way, honey. And I'm like, okay, what if you want to get on a uh, brand's PR list? That would be amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. Any brand that I can get a PR list from, if they want to sponsor me for a deal, for a product I truly believe in, if they want to, you know, make me a brand ambassador, something like that, that would be absolutely amazing. But if no brand on earth decided they never, ever, never, ever wanted to send me something, honey, do I look like I'm struggling for makeup? I can afford the things that I want, especially when it comes to makeup. I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm hardworking, and the brands that I love and support, I love and support. Juvia's Place ain't never sent me nothing, but I still have every palette they released because I wanted them, so I got them. Same thing with Pat McGrath. I got everything besides those Star Wars ones, but at the time my coin just wasn't there and they really re-released the palette, so it's like, I got them. Every palette Melt Cosmetics still released, I wanted them, so I have them. So it's like, if the brands never said nothing, honey, you good, but if for any reason you continue on like this and you realize you wake up one day and it's a million people following you and you've been filtering yourself the whole time, you gonna feel like trash at the end of the day. But if you sit back and you do you and then don't nobody like you but the few hundred you got, I'm good with that because whether one person watch my videos or a million, I'm going to go ham. But what we're going to say is one, we're getting rid of the filter. So honey, 
when that camera cut off and it come a little bit closer, if you don't like profanity, you might want to step over to the other channel. If you don't want to hear negative things, because I'm like, all of the stuff not bad. Some of it is good. It's just no place for it in my collection any longer. I'm getting rid of it. If you're the type of person who don't want nobody said nothing, oh, excuse me. This is unfiltered. I ain't going to say it's going to be unedited because I am going to add a little clips to it or words, but I ain't going to cut nothing out. But if you're the type of person who don't like nobody speaking bad on a certain brand, you might want to step out now because, honey, don't none of them pay me. I pay them. And if I don't like it, I'm going to say that. But we also be getting rid of that recording schedule because this was something that was supposed to be fun. I just do in my spare time. And by putting myself on it, you have to upload this day by this time. It takes the fun out of just making sure I can surprise you on extra days and things like that and still have to stick to my schedule. So... We're going to upload as often as we can. Since you all prefer the unedited videos, we're going to go ahead and give it to y'all. But we just got to let y'all know. It'd be hard to sometimes slur that word and get that cuss word up out of there. So, if y'all cool with it, I'm cool with it. But I, today, we're going to come closer. I'm going to show y'all some of these products I'm decluttering and why. Most of these things, if not everything, is going to be going to my sister, Shantae, and my friend, Lakeisha. But... I'm here to let y'all know in a future video, I will be showing y'all a collective haul of all the things I've purchased over the past few weeks, as well as I do got a giveaway coming up because I was shopping so fast, honey, I was buying duplicates of certain items. And since I can't have them, I'm going to give them to y'all. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and cut this. And when I come back, we're going to be a little bit closer and we're going to talk about the things I'm decluttering. Unfiltered. All right. If y'all still here, you didn't let me know. I'm here for the drama tours. I'm here for the profanity. I'm here for the negativity. So let's go ahead and get into it. First off, this is my second hairstyle, y'all. I'm still natural. Ain't no point in lying, girl. Combing that hair for the first time when you used to it going all the way through to not having to comb through your curls and the relaxings, honey. Took a little extra time, so we went with the large braids instead of the smaller ones. But I think next time I will like the smaller braids just because I think they're easier to manage when I want to pull them into other styles. It will take a lot longer to take these down than my 10 original braids. But I think each time we get our count to go a little bit higher just so we can get smaller braids. But I'm like, Torrance, if you're going to upgrade your hair, upgrade a little something in your life. So even though some of this stuff got to go, some of this stuff I'm just going to give to friends. Other stuff got to go to the trash. One of the things that just has to go to the trash is this here. This is the It Cosmetics Brow Power Universal Eyebrow Pencil. This is in the shade Universal Taupe. I honestly did like this. The problem is I had two of these and this is the second one. At one point in time, I just really did not know what brow products I liked and I could not afford to just shop around the way I do now. And so um, when these came, I believe these were like a free gift or purchase. I tried them and I absolutely loved them. It's sort of fat and thick like the uh, Brow Definer by ABH. It's not a very thin micro pencil. And with this being the shade Taupe, it was just a nice soft thing. It wasn't nothing I would use to, you know, do a dramatic carve out look. But to help accentuate my brow, she was beautiful. The problem is, like I said, it takes a while to get through a brow pencil. And this was the second one. I used up that full one. Tried to keep the second one because it reminded me of the times when I couldn't afford products. But you know what? I remember my past. I know what I used to do. And although I have fond memories of this pencil, it's not something I see myself truly repurchasing. But if for any reason I did have it, I would, you know, reuse it. I still love it cosmetics items. I have plenty of their brushes right there behind me. So it's like, okay, I remember it, but she's dried up. Nobody can use her. So to the trash she goes. These here. You know what? I said we ain't going to filter ourselves, so we not. The Too Faced Melted Latex. Now, they call these a liquefied high shine lipstick. I call this the thickest, stickiest, nastiest gloss I've ever used. Now, this one is the clear one. It's in the shade Girl on Top. This one is supposed to be a new called Hopeless Romantic. The problem with these are you have to work for these. These do not work for you. It takes several coats to give it an even color. If you use this new one, it takes forever to build up right there in the center of the lips where your saliva touched the uh, tip of your lip. It takes forever to do that. When you first put it on, it gets thick and gloppy. And every time your lips touch, it leaves a string of well, uh, like every single time your lips touch and you do. 
my, you literally see it just gloppy and uh, it is nasty. And it does eventually, I would say, set. It does not, you know, get matte or anything because it is a liquefied lipstick. I call it a gloss, a pigmented gloss. I don't care what they call it. But it is just nasty and terrible. And I don't know who has liked it. I've never heard anyone say that they like it and use it. And if you try to put it on top of a gloss or line, I mean, a lipstick or a liner, it's even worse. This is something you got to put by itself, but it takes so long to set and the final look is not worth nothing that it's like, no, ma'am. And if somebody had to ask me like, okay, what would you describe this like? All I could say is, honey, it reminds me, I don't know, just nasty, just gross. Like, honey, only thing I can think of is like, if a streetwalker just got through, you know, satisfying the customer, this is probably where her lips would feel like when she got through. Like, just gross, nasty, sticky, disgusting. Ugh, and it's called Hopeless Romantic, yeah, because only a streetwalker would be hopeless romantic with her client, and only a fool to me would be romantically in love with that thing there. She was gross and gone, and ugh, nope. Next up, when this declutter is gonna be this. The Revline Super Lustrous uh, Lips, what's this? The Revline Super Lustrous Lip Gloss in the shade Rosy Future. Now, I'm not gonna say she a bad lip gloss, but because she's a lip gloss I use, I can't pass this on to nobody else. And everybody kept saying this Revline lip gloss was gonna be a dupe for the Fenty Beauty Fenty Glow. First of all, you disrespectful for even thinking there anything that can imitate the Fenty Glow, but I mean, I guess they make up everything got to do. But first off, no ma'am. The texture is not there. The color is all right, but it's not quite there. And it's just, I had her and I used her once and was like, no ma'am. I'm good. I would rather save up even if I was broke and get the Fenty one than get this one for free, honey. She's just not going to work for me. Comparing the two of these is like, to me, Fenty Glow is like being happily in love with your husband, having a good day. He just called you, said he coming home from work and, you know, baby, be ready when I get there. You know, hey, you and that dinner ready because I want, you know, my meal and my snack and you just feeling yourself feeling good. And you hear something at the door and so you think, okay, daddy home, you run and open it up. And your ex is standing there like, baby, I miss you. And you like, miss who? Boy, if you don't get on my face and be gone, I don't know. Nah, bye, get your ass out of here. Go on. No, bye. This, that's what I feel like. This is an ex. The Fenty Glow is bang. You got to go. We can't do nothing with you. Another declutter. Now, this is actually a good product. The thing is, I know she old because I haven't used her in at least two years. So, for me to say I haven't used a bomb in two years, it's like, nah, honey, she trash now. This is the It Cosmetics Vital. The It Cosmetics Vitality Lip Flush in Je Ne Sais Quoi. I used to love this thing. It's a clear balm, and once you put it on, it turns pink, and you can see how the tip of that is actually pink. And it actually even sort of stains the lip a little bit, which is why I liked it even more. It gave me a little nourishment, gave me a little color, and then I could just put a clear balm on top of that if I needed a little more moisturization without having to worry about that tint. And I really liked her. The thing is, like I said, it's been two years since I used her. She's definitely got to be dried up. I don't even want to swatch her just in case she's waxy. But if I wanted another one, I could go ahead and purchase another one. If they still have this formula, I would recommend it. The thing is, I had this color sitting right on the side of it. This is in the same formula. And instead, this is in the shade Pretty Woman. I got this just because right before I went to the store to pick up one of these, I seen an ad for the Julia Roberts movie Pretty Woman and just grabbed it and never used it because look how dark this is. And the thing is, this is starting to grow little bumps on it. So that's either means like the dehydrate, I mean the moisture is coming out or mold or bacteria is starting to grow on it. But I'm somebody who like nudes. And if for any reason I wanted a deep dark shade, more than likely I will go for a full lipstick. I don't want a dark tint on my lips. So it's like, yeah, you see, I never even used her and she went bad. So to the trash she goes. Those two are gone. The rest of these items aren't things that are going in the trash, but things I'm actually going to just declutter. And one of the first things that I'm going to be giving to my sister will be this, the Profusion New Bliss Palette. I tested this out and everything about her was just... I'll be right back. I'm not sure how that started doing that.
Honey, honey, honey. I don't know why or how that song just started playing, but it truly did. I'm glad I caught it. All right, back to the new Bliss palette. This here from Profusion, I got it. And everything about her was just okay. As someone who really likes deep, dark crease shades because I have hooded eyes, she just never quite gave me enough. Everything I did with her was just pretty and okay. I'm like, the packaging is okay. The price was really nice. The color story is just okay, but it's nothing as deep, dark, and as colorful and as bold as I would want. So I'm like, why not just give this away because I have no desire to use her, pick her up, or keep her. And this is something my sister likes because she likes soft, neutral looks. She has a few brushes. She has a few palettes. So this is something she could add to her collection. And because she also, you know, usually has my niece over, this is something that she could probably keep low. And if she plays with it, it would not be a problem for her. So this is something I'm going to pass to my sister because I do not see myself using it. Another eyeshadow palette that I would like to give her is this one here. I have two of these palettes, so I don't need this one. This one used to actually sit in my freelance kit. This is the NARS Glass Tears palette from the Man Ray Collection. I realized I put this in my kit and I never used it, so I don't need it. And the main reason I had it is because it has dark jewel tone shades, but it also had a matte black. Just in case for some reason I wanted to do a dark vampy look, I always had this. But I've already replaced these shadows with other brands, so it's like, okay, this is something that actually has pretty packaging. Oh, excuse me. Honey, I had this burp that i just been fighting with and he finally came up. But this one actually has pretty packaging, so it's like, okay, go ahead, give her this. This is something she can actually keep. I absolutely love the entire uh, NARS Man Ray collection, but I am pissed as hell that I purchased every piece of that collection, and NARS released everything but the absolute largest palette. It's called the Love Game Palette. That was an overseas Europe exclusive. One of the most fucked up moments in makeup history, I promise you. To this day, I am bitter about it. And every time I hear something about NARS, I always say, but y'all know y'all wrong for doing that to me. So getting rid of this helps me forget that I could not have that Love Game palette in my collection because the rest of it sits over in my um, shelf. This sits right out in my freelance area. And by getting rid of it, I can get rid of remembering that Love Game palette so my sister can have that there. She's also going to get this. This is the, what is this palette called? I don't even remember what they called this palette. When I can remember, I'll just probably leave it in the description bar below. But the Stone Vibes palette, that's what it's called. This is the Stone Vibes Mini. I purchased the Stone Vibes Mini as well as the larger palette. And I gave the larger one to my sister because I believe it's a beautiful color story and it has nice packaging. And I consider my sister to be um, a sister... I consider my sister to be a gem in my life. And so I'm like, by giving her the bigger one, she'll have something that's pretty that she can leave out. It's something she can use her fingers with instead of brushes. It's something she can use her finger with instead of brushes. So, you know, it's something she can do really fast, really quickly, no problem. And I decided to keep this smaller one here because I'm like, you know, we could both have some of the same things, but I really did not want that large one. I really love using my brushes. But I'm like, this gives us, you know, two pieces of a whole puzzle. And whenever we get together, we can go ahead and use this. The thing is, I don't see myself using this because it just does not have the complexity that I like in an eyeshadow palette. To me, it leaves me very limited on what I can do because this yellow shade can't be used as a transition shade on my complexion. So I'm always going to be stuck with using this as a transition, this as a crease and keep it moving. If I want more depth, I would have to get that larger one. And I keep looking at it and knowing if I'm not going to use finger shades, I don't want it. But because the completion in this, because the completionist in me wants everything, I got to get rid of it or I'm going to buy the other one. So by giving this to my sister, it completes her uh, collection. It's something I never even use. So I can still love my sister. I can still play with it if I ever wanted to, if I go over her house. But to make sure I don't add that other palette to my collection, I have to get rid of this one so she can have that one. Another thing that does that for me, that completionist mentality, I got to get rid of these and I'm going to give these to my sister as well. These are the Kat Von D Shade and Light uh, Eye Contour Quads. I've had these for years and the thing is they've come out with like two or three more that I don't have. And every time I see them come across my computer screen on sale, I keep telling myself Kat Von D is no longer a part of the brand. You can go ahead and complete your collection. 
but I don't use the ones I have now, so I do not want the temptation any longer to continue to buy anymore. So I'm just about to get rid of these and she can have these. This one here is in the smoke. It's a nice blue tone smoky quad. I like blues, but I don't need any more. And this is something that she probably does not have. I don't recall her actually purchasing or showing me a collection of any matte smoky blues. So this is something that will benefit her, but doesn't necessarily benefit me. Well, it does because it takes away the collectionist for me. Um, I'm also going to give her the fawn one. Some nice neutral ones on those days where she may want to do a matte look. Want something with a little more complexity than just a base one color look. But not something that's going to be over the top or too dark or too deep. She can also have the one that, ooh, it irritated me the most. And right before I turned on the camera, I just dumped it. Because this biggest shade here cracked and fell out years ago. And I've repressed it so many times and it never performed right. And it never held up in here. So I just finally dusted it out. I was going to throw it away. But I know my sister loves purple shadows. So if she wants this one as well, she can keep it. This is the Plum Quad. I guess it's a trio now. If she wants it, she can keep it. If not, I'm going to toss this one. And I also have the Rust Quad, which is probably the one she'll get the most use out of just because it has those nice neutral tones to it. But once again, I have neutrals not only from Kat Von D, but from other brands that I really love and enjoy. So to keep me from purchasing the, those others that are on sale, I'm getting rid of those. The only one I will be keeping for myself will be this one here, the Sage Quad. And it's simply because it has that matte green and you know greens are my absolute favorites. I have green shadows from Kat Von D and this is one that I can continue to add to other looks even if I just dip it in it for this one shade. I love greens from any and every brand so by having just this one I know I'm not going to go in and start over and buy all the others but I can truly get some enjoyment out of this so I'm going to keep this one. I'm also going to be giving my sister a few eye primers since I'm giving her all of these eyeshadows. The first one that I am going to be giving her is this Maybelline Fit, well it's not an eye primer, but this is a Maybelline Fit Me concealer in the shade 20. I have 20 right here, I also have 30 and 40 behind me, so there's no point of me holding on to this one. When I ordered them, they were stuck together. I called uh, Walmart, let them know that they sent me to, they told me I can keep the other one or throw it away, and I put it on the shelf and completely forgot about it, but... She can have this because I know if I can use it as a highlighting concealer with my sister being the same shade, she can use it as well. So she'll get this one. I'll keep this one. And whether she wants to use that as an eyeshadow base or as, you know, a highlighting concealer, she can go ahead and do so. And because I'm giving her so many other eye palettes, I wanted to give her some other eye primers. The first one I have here is the Bare Minerals BB-5-1 Advanced PB. Wait. The Bare Minerals 5-in-1 BB Advanced Performance Cream Eyeshadow Broad Spectrum SPF 15. My sister absolutely loves this formula. I remember she used to have this in the large full-size tube, so I already know she loves this eye primer. The fact that I have the sample that I have no intentions on using it means I know she'll get some use out of that. Another brand that makes a shade similar to that that she'll be able to test out is this Laura Mercier Eye Basics one in the shade Wheat. This is another one, you know, nice beigey color, creamy texture. It'll give her the chance to play with different formulas, whether she likes it or not. It's just a miniature. If she loves it, she can repurchase in full size. If not, toss it out and it costs her nothing. Two other ones that I have here is a all white one. This is the P. Louise base in the shade Rumor Zero. I used to actually use this at one point in time to help get the most pigment out of my colors. I no longer go through that either a shadow works or it does it for me and if it doesn't it's just that and another thing is I'm no longer supporting P. Louise because some things came out about her um, we're just gonna say as a fair-skinned woman it was some information and some videos that came out of her using derogatory language we just gonna say the n-word and with that um, instead of just coming out and you know I apologize I'm not gonna say it again I'm not gonna do it again Sis decided, when people decided they were no longer going to support her and they were going to cancel her, um, she pulled a Jeffree Star move basically where instead of you being able to look up P. Louise canceled and pull up that, she came out with an eyeshadow palette called Cancelled. So whenever you Google P. Louise Cancelled, you get images of the eyeshadow palette. And I say she pulled a Jeffree Star because... Jeffree Star came out with that controversy palette with, you know, Shane Dawson. So now whenever you look up Jeffree Star in controversy or Shane Dawson controversy, you get a picture of the eyeshadow palette, not necessarily anything they've done in their past. Marketing, smart. 
but that's still a trash move to do instead of just coming out and saying what you did was wrong. So, Pete Louise, I don't want you, and because I know my sister doesn't have an online channel or presence or anything right now, I know she's not going to just use this and advertise it. So, by getting it out of my collection, I can't either any longer. And because I just wanted to give her some shimmery, colorful bases to use, I'm also going to give her the Milk Makeup Eye Pigment. This is in Silent Disco. I believe this is like a nice purpley shade. So she can go ahead and use this on those days she want a quick shimmery cr uh, cream look. I also have the Makeup Forever Aqua XL Color Paint. This is in M56. So this looks like this is a nice burgundy taupey shade. So once again, she can have this. I'm also, because this Bliss palette has a glitter in it, I'm going to be giving her the ABH Glitter Adhesive. I realize not only do I have this backup that was on the shelf, I already have one right here that I have. I'm not going to go through all of these because I have that one. I have the Eye Candy Liquid Sugar one here. I have my Inglot Duraline right here. I have my Lit Cosmetics. What is this? Daily Wear uh, Glitter Base right here. So it's like I don't need all of those and this one so she can get this. So if she wants to test out with one of those glitters in that Profusion palette, she'll be able to do so. And it's like, all right, sis, now that we didn't figure out what we're giving my sister, the things I want to give to my friend Lakeisha because I know she absolutely loves makeup. The difference between Lakeisha and my sister is my sister's a big eye girl. Like she likes doing, you know, I wouldn't say complex eye looks, but she doesn't mind going in doing one on the crease, one on the lid, also getting her some nice mascara, maybe even a strip lash going. My girl, Lakeisha, although she might be bigger into foundation, she might just do a little, you know, BB cream or a little foundation, set it with a little powder and be good. She also likes a little eyeshadow, but she likes her eyeshadow looks simple. Like, she's that one color across the eye and keep it moving. She's not about to be going in, buffing in the crease and doing all of that. So, although she may do more steps, she likes a lot of simple things. And so, I wanted to give her a few things that I know could help her, but I no longer necessarily need. One of those is going to be this here, the Shade and Light Eye Glimmer Palette. I meant to declutter this a minute ago and never did so, and now I am going to do so because I am tired of just having it around. I don't get any joy out of this palette because I like detailed, complex, over-the-top looks. And I realized with this palette, because I'm not someone who's against putting shimmer in the crease, I can't take this palette where I want it to. I can't just pick up four or five of these shades, wear them all at one time, and get a beautiful look. This is something where you just take that one color, put her down, and keep it moving. You're not buffing her off. You're not pairing her with nothing else. So you just use that one color and use her for what she is. My friend Lakeisha can do that with this palette. I cannot, so she has to go. The one I like to use from them that I'm going to keep is this one here, the regular shade and eye light, uh, palette, because this is the all matte version. And when I look at her, honey, I see the depth. I see the variety. I see the different colors I can use for this. And I have for years, which is why once the cardboard version I had of this palette went away, I repurchased this one. This one I love because of her complexity. This one here, she a basic simple bitch. And I mean, that's not a bad thing if you, you know, like that with your makeup. If you like the simple makeup, that's what looks most natural. But as a 34-year-old gay man who be over the top with his honey, um, no, nah, I need a little more dramatic, you know, looking man. I need a little oomph, a little huh, and that just don't give it to me. So yeah, she got to go. Another item we're going to be giving Keisha are these three pressed face powders. I know she likes to just put her foundation on, put her powder on and go. I like to put a little brightening powder on, contour, all of that. And every time I told myself I would test these powders out, I just never did. And they're just sitting here. These are the Revlon Photo Ready Powder Compacts. I have them in all three shades. This is shade 10. I never even opened this one to see what she's like. I did open and swatch shade 20. She was okay, but she never didn't have like quite the shine I wanted to use it as a finishing powder. And I never got around to testing her out as a setting powder. And I also have shade 30 here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, need me some hands. I said, no, give me one second, y'all. Baby. Oh, that's the one bad thing about these unedited videos. You got to make sure you be ready. Can't cut that out, but I don't want to be touching all over makeup and stuff that I might get if somebody else says. All right, back to it. Um, 30. Look at here. Red light, I know they was wrong for this. This is shade 30, the deepest, darkest shade. 
This is called the deep shade. Yes, yes, so even if I would have liked shades 20 and 30, which I did truly believe I could have liked if I used them as a setting powder, I would have truly wanted a shade 40 just in case I wanted to use it as a finishing powder, and they don't offer that, so it's like I never had the desire to use her, so she gone, you know what, bye, we're not even going to test her out. Another thing that we're going to give Keisha, because she likes simple eye looks, one color looks, and she can be out of there, we're going to give her my NARS and my Laura Mercier Cream Color Sticks. I believe uh, NARS calls their Velvet Shadow Sticks. I don't even know how to pronounce that word, so we're not even going to say what it is. This is like a nice little taupey brown shade. She's going to get this one here. With Laura Mercier, theirs are called Caviar Sticks. I have three miniatures and one full size, and I'm quite sure Keisha would love these because these are something she could just take, rub straight right on the lid up into the crease, and possibly even just take a brush and rub that, uh, rub it out on the crease. If not, she could just leave it there and be good to go. This one here is in the shade Rose Gold. Of course, it's going to be a shimmery rose gold color. I have this one here called Sand Glow. It's a nice, I would say it looks like a taupey gold color. She's real pretty. She's not an extremely warm gold, but she's nice. But I've never used her, so it's like, honey, why not give somebody else the chance? have Eau Naturel, which looks like a nice just nude brown color, something she could just use on soft natural days or as an eye base. And then I also have this shade here, Plum. Plum is the full size purple and it's like, honey, if you're going to give somebody the chance to play with color, why not go ahead and give them something like a nice cream shade where she can start off with that, get it going. And if she wants something more, she can add a shadow on top of it. So I'm going to give her those because it's like, honey, you never going to use those. I have mattes that I love and I'm going to keep those going. Something else we have are these five lip liners. These are also from Revline. These are the Color Stay lip liners. And though, although I have tried these, you can disinfect these. The thing is, I don't care for this formula. No, let me stop lying. I love the formula. I don't like twist up lip liners. I prefer ones that I can sharpen because I feel as if they give me a longer shelf life. And so with these, I'm just not holding on to them. I had one that I did use up, but now with these, I don't even see me testing these out even more. Some of them may not have even been used, but I have them in the shade. This nude here is called Naturel. I have this nice peachy, punchy color called Pink. I have a nice warm reddish brown here. This one is called Nude. And then I have this nice mauve shade here called Mauve. So she can get these four here because I'm not going to be needing those. I also have two lip glosses that I promised to take to her and another lady at work, but I keep forgetting about it. So by putting them in this video, it will truly remind me. These are two matte lip glosses. One is in the shade Signs of Spring. More than likely, this is the one that Keisha's going to get. It's a nice nude pinky peach color. Something that she can use on any day, whether she just wants to top off her lips or add this under a brown liner. I mean, over a brown liner. It's something nice. I also have another co-worker, Keisha. I ain't forget about you either, sis. I know you don't wear makeup, but we're going to get you into it. This is a nice, just medium, dark, you know, pinky color. This one here is called Magically Delightful. So I know she don't like the name of that. So I'm going to make sure I give her that because she has a deeper complexion than I do. So I did want to get her something that's around my tone that, you know, could wash her out. And the last thing I'm going to be giving Keisha is another eyeshadow palette. It's something that at first I was bitter about having to give up. But now I realize, honey, I don't use it. So it does not matter. The Natasha Denona All Matte Palette. Honey, I know she is expensive. The packaging is my all-time favorite out of all of them. To have this nice, beautiful green, I've always wanted a green truck this color. But the formula inside, it just does nothing for me. To me, it's like the Shade and Light Eye Glimmer palette. The color story is absolutely beautiful. The thing is, this is best to just take, put this on the lid and keep it moving. When you go to blending out and layering and things like that, trouble and sores. And for $129, honey, Natasha just got to do better. I absolutely love, love, love her shimmer formula. But I feel as if her matte formula is always hit or miss. When she's good, she's good. But when she's bad, she is trash. And for $130, it's just something I can't do. And 
the main reason I'm gonna give this to Keisha is because she's the type who likes simple looks. So she'll probably just take this one brown color, put that on the lid and keep it moving. So she'll be good to go. Me who gonna pick up two, three brushes, try to buff that out, try to deepen that my outer beat, try to create a liner, smoke out my lower lash line. It does not give me the freedom to want to go in and play with six, seven colors without finding one that's gonna disappoint me. So at this price point, you just, you can't stay. And another one, I know I'm giving this one to Keisha, but another one she may risk getting by the end of the year if I just don't find any joy in it will be in the future this Natasha Denona Sunset palette. I've been keeping these simply because they, once again, they're $130. And for all of the larger palettes that I have like this, I have its smaller counterpart. And the thing is, these are $25 and I love these and they're amazing. The problem is these big ones, they hit and miss, and I'm not a big fan of orange shadows. And the worst thing about it is this yellow is the worst one of them all. And I love matte yellows. So if I don't use this by the end of the year, she will get this one too. But before my camera cuts off, honey, I wanted to go ahead and just say I love you. I thank you all for supporting the channel. I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed. And until next time, goodbye, YouTube. Thank you.